Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and today we're going to do a pretty simple liquid write-on effect. So here's the write-on effect we're going to make. This first part has linear keyframes, but the ending is eased. So it kind of whips out. The only thing I'll say about easing on this is that if you're going to use it, make sure that there's not a lot of letters left at the end because it gets kind of weird if you do it that way. What I mean by that is like don't have a curve that goes like this at the end of something where it's coming in because then everything happens kind of at the end and it doesn't look as good. So you'd want to actually extend it on the way in and then make it end quicker so that it takes a second to get going and then whips at the end, which is how this last part goes. All right, so let's take a look at how this is built. Don't get bogged down with specific settings or any of that kind of stuff in this thing. There's a lot of variability and there's going to be a project file you can take a look at. So let's turn off a bunch of these layers and just see what the base looks like. I'll leave that one on too. So inside this we have some text animators set up. And all we have is blur and opacity set up. Because they come in, looks like that. And then I have another set for when it goes out. Don't confuse blur 2 with blur song 2. Woo! <laughs> Alright, anyway, so on top of that we have a bunch of different adjustments. The first we have is a single letter. If we turn that on, solo it, and turn off these effects, you can see it's basically just every letter comes in, and it's blurry, and it goes away. So it's basically the same thing of that, but the range is only around the character itself. The second one is the same thing. And we did the same thing for this other piece of text. So every piece of text that's in this thing is like that. So we turn all those on. So you don't really see that. All right, so let me turn on the color and the levels. So the first thing, that levels just crushes down that blur. To that, we're adding a turbulent displace. You'll have to modify the settings to fit whatever look you want but the evolution is animated. I tried to keep the evolution on all the turbulent displaces in this kind of animated at the same time, but I'm probably failed and it's not really all that noticeable if you don't. And then after that, we have simple choker, which just brings in this edge. So on its own, that's not blurry. That blur is actually coming from the background thing here. Now what might be interesting, which I didn't try before, is if you combine this technique with the blobs tutorial that we did, I think it's number three, not the updated ones, but that one in particular. If you use that technique, you could actually blob all these things together. I can't think of exactly what that would look in my head, but I bet it'd be pretty neat. I might try that later. All right, so let's unsolo that. And then we'll go on to our first bunch of adjustment layers. So you can see I've tried a couple of things in here, but ultimately I ended up shutting them off. So this adjustment layer isn't a regular adjustment layer. It's actually a shape layer. So I put this line on here, and then I went into our shape settings here. And to the stroke, I added a zigzag and then a trim path. So this animates on in a zigzag. You can't see it now because of how I have this adjustment layer set up, but if I turn this off and I turn these two off and I turn the layer actually on, you can see we have this blob that kind of goes along with the text. And it's basically just big enough to cover a letter relatively, not completely. So this makes it so that this effect is just applied in this area. So we turn this back into an adjustment layer and turn on levels. So as we go across here, this levels was originally intended to crush this blur down but it's not really doing that too much anymore. The more important thing on here is the turbulent displace. So we're adding another turbulent displace, but this one's gonna move in that pattern. We have this one cranked up a little bit more and it also evolves. So as we go across here, it's gonna push things around. That's what's responsible for all of this kind of swirl in here. You can kind of see where the edge of it goes. If you wanna get rid of this hard edge, instead of using this shape layer as an adjustment layer, just use a regular adjustment layer and use this shape layer as a track mat. And then you can add a Gaussian blur or something like that so that it blends. I actually like the way this looks, so I didn't do that. And that's it for getting this to blend together. So on top of that, at the end, I have the logo do it as well, with the regular adjustment layer set the same way. Initially, I'd actually animated this across here, and then I thought of using the stroke to actually kind of build it on as we go up and down across the thing, which gave it a lot more movement. So basically, the whole technique boils down to isolating each one of these letters, applying some turbulent displacement, and then having another adjustment layer on top that does even more turbulent displacement, that follows that stroke. There's a lot of different effects you can come up with, but this is just the one that I built. The only thing you might get hung up on is actually how to isolate these letters. And really that's pretty simple. If we go down here to the single letter, and open that up, and our text animators we have an opacity just like the other ones. And we have this range selector with advanced stuff turned on. Instead of mode being add, in this case mode is subtract. Let me turn this off. Turn these off too. So all I have is the range set to start zero and the end at index one. I'm using index, not percentage. And then I'm animating the offset so that we go from character to character. If you want this to be exactly character to character, 
instead of having your offset set up like this, you can just do math.floor value. So now you have exactly one character at a time. I don't even know what that looks like. Let's check it out. Let's turn these back on. Huh, interesting. It's hard to tell the difference. They just don't blend together as much. Seems a little cooler without it, but that's an option you can do. So that's how you isolate a character with the opacity set to zero. You have to think of this like a mask. When this is set to add, it applies to this portion. When it's set to subtract, it applies to everything else. Other than that, that's pretty much it. It's all done that way, and then the back end is just reversed. Didn't turn that one back on. Generally, you have to pre-comp this, unless you want this to affect the background as well. You could set this up to where you're only adjusting these specific letters by maybe using one of these write-on strokes for a track mat for the single letters. So if you really needed to do it like that, you're gonna have to mess around with it. There's also this like painterly thing I did, which basically uses CC vector blur to add to it. So it kind of blurs it all together. CC vector blur is really weird sometimes, but it kind of works for a look like this. So if we play that, you can see it gets like a lot more like finger painty or something, but it's also an interesting look. It's just another way you can modify it. So mess around with that and see what you can come up with. There's a lot of ways to extend this to do whatever you want with it, especially when you select those single characters out. So I hope you guys enjoyed that one. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. I got my head checked by a jumbo jet. It wasn't easy, but nothing as oh, woo.